um, when in when we're indulging in things that defile us, and there's many ways to do that. Um, so I've covered that ground. We need to move on. There's so much more that can be said. Um, we also need discernment. And here's what David, these are hard cries. By the way, as, I, as we put these verses on the screen, don't just read them. Go ahead and pray them yourself, even in the moment. Give me understanding. This is a great request. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. Indeed, I shall observe it. And here's that phrase again, brothers, with my whole heart. I want somebody out there. I can't hear you. That's fine. And don't, yeah, keep, keep yourself muted. But I want somebody to say out loud, my whole heart. That's one of our keys today, as you've already seen. Verse 128, therefore, all your precepts concerning all things I consider to be right. And watch where God brought King David to. I hate every false way. That's discernment. Knowing what's good and clinging to what's good and, and knowing what's bad and, and, uh, and, and turning from those things that are bad, that's a false way. Hating those things, that's discernment. And um, we have a problem, especially you know, here in my country, in America. Christians do not discern the difference between good and evil. I mean, the programs that Christians watch, sadly, in many cases, are exactly what the world watches. We do not discern. Um, the political parties that we align with, and there's so much I could say about that, but I will not. Um, Christians say one thing in church or even at home, but then when they go in the voting booth, they vote for interests or, or, or movements that are completely contrary to what scripture says. We have a huge problem with double-minded in, 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 in the U.S. So there's little difference, uh, sadly, um, between Christians and non-Christians in what they shop for, uh, in the games they buy their children for Christmas. Uh, they allow themselves to be a slave to, you know, the culture. Um, they're not teaching their children. God says he makes a distinction between his people and the people of the world. That's what God does. And if you're, again, overly approving of things that are ungodly for some, whatever the reason may be, and you make excuses for it, you're not using discernment. And um, these things do not please God. Biblical ignorance brings a lack of discernment. And again, all these scriptures we've read talks about keeping the law with our heart. And, uh, and clinging to what is good. That's from the New Testament. It says, you know, cling to what is good and shun what is evil. That's discernment. Knowing the difference between that which pleases God and that which does not please God. Remember that the enemy, according to Paul in the New Testament, comes as an angel of light. He never comes to you with, you know, the typical picture that people paint. I don't know why, with the, the red guy with the, the horns. Um, the devil doesn't come to you and say, hi, I'm the devil. He never does that. He always comes with something that looks good. And uh, so Paul says, again, we are not ignorant of his devices. We need discernment. So if you've gotten yourself in trouble because you didn't discern something, perhaps you got into a business deal and, and maybe your wife, who is more discerning than you in some cases, and, and God has put that in our wives, and we must not look down on that. Uh, you know, and, and your wife tells you, honey, I don't think this guy is out for your best interest. Now, we as men, since this is predominantly a men's uh, ministry, a broadcast here, I'll, I'll call it, I'm showing my age, um, but many times our wives speak to us and they have discernment on things, guys. We need to honor that. And, uh, you know, we need to recognize that. So I'm going to, this is a bonus. I, this is not in my original notes, but I want one brave man to put in the chat now. Yeah, my wife told me about, you know, you don't have to say what it is. My wife did tell me about this or that, and I did not listen or I did not discern. And then, you know, a bad thing happened. Uh, this is just for fun, mainly, but it's, it's really not funny. But uh, I want one brave man to admit his wife was right and he was wrong. And, uh, and that he now needs better discernment. So let's get in the word. Let's stay in the word. That's what we've been saying consistently. Uh, as you increase your Bible input into your life, then discernment will naturally automatically go up. 
Let's hate every false way, guys. And let's pray that right now. Let's take a prayer break for a second. Father God, help us to observe your word with our whole heart, not just half a heart, but our whole heart. And help us to hate that which is evil. Help us to hate every false way, Father God, so that we can discern better than we do right now. We need your discernment, Father God, in these wicked times in which we live. In Jesus' name, amen. Somebody say amen. That's right. And so this is a very important topic, brothers. Um, in a way, this is really what I wanted to get to. Um, the role of discipline in our lives. Remember, God is a good, good, good father. And like any good father, and many of you are fathers out there, there are times when you don't want to bring pain to your child. But for some children, pain is the only way that they seem to learn. And that's hard for you as a dad. But uh, and I don't mean you, you know, you abuse your children or beat your children or, or you know, you're inappropriate. I'm not saying that at all. But discipline is part of a loving relationship. And um, so so David, again, we're going back to King David. We're using because he wrote Psalm 119. And uh, King David has the most famous example of discipline by the father in the word of God. Uh, again, I don't need to, to recap for you, but the consequences for his taking another man's wife were very severe, very, and those consequences haunted David for years. They didn't go away, and in fact, his sin cost the life of a baby, as well as, of course, taking away the life of one of his most loyal um, warriors. It was a terrible tragedy before God, and David had to be severely disciplined by God to bring his heart back. So, but we now get the benefit now. We don't have to learn by going through what David went through. We can now learn by reading what David wrote. And what did David write about the topic of discipline? He says, before I was afflicted or disciplined, I went astray. But now I keep your word. I could stop right there, brothers. There's the benefit. Now, if we don't learn voluntarily the easy way, well, guess what? then we have enrolled ourselves to learn the hard way. It's really not God's preference, but God loves us too much to let us stay off track. Um, and so if necessary, God will permit pain in our lives to get us back on track. Some of you right now, I believe, who are watching are going through a circumstance in your life that you know was not God's original intention, but God has had to discipline you just like a good father does with his son. And, uh, and you're getting back on track, but you regret the stupid things that you did. And that applies to many men. So before I was afflicted again, King David says, I went astray, but now I keep your word. This is what God wants. He wants us to keep his word. Now, the better thing to do is to keep it the first time. And by the way, I've been, as a side note, um, I've been in the presence of our good brother, Craig, recently, me and my fiance, who you will get to meet um, one of these days, and uh, with him and his beloved bride and, and uh, their, their beautiful children. And I was very impressed by how our brother Craig, with love, but with quiet firmness, he disciplined his boys. And, um, and they heard the voice of their father, which is great. So I'm going to give a public shout out to you, Craig. Good for you. 